Hey, welcome into the Revo Church Podcast. I'm Jamie. I'm the host of the podcast, and this is episode three of Spiritual Disciplines. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about an intro of what is a spiritual discipline? Why are they important? Why should I want to live a disciplined life? And then last week, we talked about Bible reading and how maybe Bible reading should be more Bible saturation. Um, I personally think it was a great episode, so if you haven't listened to it, hey, pause this video and go watch that one. But today we're going to be moving from Bible reading to Bible study. I am joined again with my friend, uh, Matthew. Matthew, you can say hello. Hello. (laughs) <laughs> there we go. Uh, I thought last week was great too. Um, I, I know I was in it, so great. personally, I'm a little it was, biased, but it might have been the best one because it was yeah. Me and you. Well, and it was kind of like the first one outside of the introduction, so, so it's like, not much to choose from. Yeah. yeah, listen, <laughs> but hey, I thought <laughs> I, it was great. too. I think it was great. But we talked all about Bible reading. Well, today we're going to talk about Bible study because when we're looking at spiritual disciplines, they are things, they are tools that are meant to bring us closer to God. They are tools that are meant to make us become more sanctified believers. Sanctified means becoming more like Jesus in our walk. They are what causes us to see 1 Corinthians 3, where Paul wrote and he said, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. Verse 2, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. In that verse, Paul's looking at the people and saying, You are not ready for the meat of the gospel. You are not ready to get the deep thoughts of who God is and and how that impacts you. And so our goal of spiritual disciplines is to move from people that are milk drinkers to meat eaters. Uh, We don't want to be people that are milk drinkers our entire life. We want to move to the meat. And Bible studying is how we can do that in a more deeper level. It's the filet mignon of the spiritual disciplines. Bible study is the filet with the shrimp, yeah, yeah, and on, maybe a side of lobster, like oh, a little oh, surfing turf with the lobster. Turf. Yeah, it's but at least it is to me. The Bible study is like that. It's Bible the, study, full disclosure. Bible study is my favorite of the spiritual disciplines. It's the one that of all of the spiritual disciplines that we're going to talk about. It might be the one that I would say I'm the best at. Hmm. Not to brag because I don't even think I'm good at it. Well, I, I I'll just leave then if you're you know I'll let Jamie I tell you. Yeah, I this is, it's a sermon but, now. We're talking about Bible study. So my first question that people are probably wondering is, what's the difference between Bible reading and Bible studying? I think a good way to differentiate from Bible reading and Bible study is the idea that Bible reading is what gives you context for your Bible study. Mm. Um, Bible reading is about gathering context. It's saturating, like we talked about last week, saturating your life with God's Word so that when you're studying you're not wondering, well, wait, what's going on here? Um, Now, you may have those questions, but you can at least have other knowledge to draw from. It makes Bible study and understanding what God's trying to show you about himself so much easier when you have all that other knowledge and all that other context Mm -hmm. to go from. And Bible reading, saturating your life with the Bible, taking it in while you're in the car, while you're listening to a podcast, listening to the audio Bible, reading it while you're, you know, doing something else where you're not really going to comprehend everything. You're not trying to, you know, have some deep time. You're just reading something. And rather than pick up a secular book, you pick up the Bible, right? All those things are going to help you when it comes to your Bible study and understanding what God is trying to teach, and what God's trying to show you. Um, and so I think that's, that's kind of a major difference is Bible reading helps you think biblically and all of life because you know all those stories, but Bible study is about knowing God, being transformed by God, using the knowledge that you've got from Bible reading in general. Exactly. When I think about the big difference, for me, one of the big differences, the way I differentiate between Bible study and Bible reading, and this is just a personal thing for me, is my Bible reading is when I'm sitting down and just reading to see, okay, where is God in this passage? Right. Or where is God? What can he teach me in this small moment? Mm-hmm. When I think about my Bible study, I'm not just cracking open my Bible. I'm cracking open my Bible. I'm cracking open a notebook. I'm actively writing down questions. Yep. I'm actively writing down, okay, Jesus said that just as the snake is lifted up, so must the Son of Man in John chapter 3. What in the world does, what that, in the mean? World does yeah. that mean? So then I'm looking up, okay, was there ever a moment that a snake was lifted up? Mm-hmm. Oh, Numbers 15 
talks about how a snake was lifted up. And so then I'm starting to make those right, connections. Right. And I'm starting to actually think it's numbers 21. You can fact check me. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> hey, we fact checked you last time. You last time. You know what? Let me, just, let me bring it out. Let me bring it out. Let's <laughs> fact, fact check, check me. It. It's either numbers Sword 15 drill. or 21. Can you beat me to numbers 15? Can I beat you? But when I'm thinking Bible studying, I'm thinking about, I read this 21. Thing, yeah, 21. 21. Okay, 21. So it was the second time. Yep. When I'm thinking about, it's Jesus saying, I was lifted up just like a serpent was lifted up. What does he mean a serpent mm -hmm. was lifted up? And so then I'm going and I'm trying to dive a little bit deeper. Right. When I'm reading it, I'm saying, okay, Jesus was lifted up. We know that lifted up on the cross. Mm -hmm. That's great. And to me, okay, he was lifted up. He's dying for my sin. Right. When I'm studying, I'm saying, he said he's lifted up. What is the point of him being lifted up? Yeah. Lifted up like a serpent in the wilderness. What serpent was ever lifted up in yeah. the wilderness? Why is that important? How is that important to the fact that he's talking to Nicodemus? Mm -hmm. Nicodemus was a Jewish leader. How does all of this connect? And so when I'm thinking about Bible reading, it's I'm just seeing God in this moment. Right. I'm trying to get to know God. When I'm thinking Bible studying, I'm saying, okay, we know that the Bible's one big story. Right. How does it all connect? And you've got that whole context already there because you've been reading the Bible. So exactly. over time, you'll eventually get to John 3 again, and you get to John 3, 16, the most famous verse mm -hmm. in the Bible, and you already know where you're reading Yep. What what's coming up with snakes lifted up? You know that's in Numbers twenty one, not Numbers fifteen. You know you know you you already know these things, and it just makes those times even more rich and yep. more deep because you've read and because you've studied. So I think having those two um, kind of molded together is a is a big key. I think so too, and I think you know one thing that has definitely helped me, and it's I'm sure it helped you. Is it's no secret we've both went to seminary. We both went where we took classes that were. At least I took a class that was literally how to interpret the Bible. Yep. It was called biblical interpretations. And I took three of them, one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. I took a Bible doctrine class. I'm sure you had to take probably systematic theologies. Yep. And so we have this underlying base that other people don't have. So the question then is, if you don't go to Bible college, because if you are a believer in Jesus, you're called to be holy as I am holy. That's what Peter said in first Peter. But how can people that they didn't go to seminary, but they want to study, like, how can that happen for them? How can they do that? Yeah, I mean, I think you first have to start with just understanding it's not a daunting task. Mm -hmm. It seems like it, um, it but it can feel like you it, don't maybe. have to go to seminary or Bible college or attend yep. a Christian school or take these classes in order to study the Bible. Exactly. Um, you don't have to do that. And, and in fact one of the doctrines you learn about in seminary is the idea that God's word is very clear and that yeah. the main meaning that God is trying to get across, the main message of the Bible is very clear for any believer to be able to understand mm -hmm. and interpret. And and so the the idea that studying the Bible is reserved for pastors and scholars and seminarians, like that's just not true. That's not um, at all. Yes, they do those things, um, and they probably do them well because they've been trained, mm -hmm. um, but that's not that doesn't mean that... that you know, random person listening to this can't also do it. Yep. Um, and, and so I think you've just got to start acknowledging that God didn't write the Bible for pastors and scholars only. He wrote it for all people, for all of his people. And yep. so that means that he didn't make it really hard to figure things out. Exactly. Um, he wrote it so that you can understand it. He's revealing himself, right? He's not teaching a class. He's not, what. let's see if they can figure this out. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, no, he's, he's trying to reveal who he is. I think about it. So in the sermon on Sunday in Acts chapter 2, you talk about, you know, we're going to, we talked about how the spirit descends on right. the disciples. And so they go out and they start speaking to the crowds. And the crowds look, and the crowds aren't saying, look at these highly educated gentlemen. Yeah, the crowds look exactly. and say, what are these Galileans doing? <laughs> How are these They're Galileans uneducated men. The most uneducated men. They're yeah. fishermen. <laughs> right. And they are breaking down the text of the gospel. Mm -hmm. They are doing this, and they're like, how is this happening? Right. It's because it's God revealing it to us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we went to seminary, and it was great. I enjoyed it, but... If you want to study the word, you don't have to be a seminary student. You don't have to be a forever student. You just need to actively say, I want to know more about this God. Right. I want to know more about the God that, that came down and died for me and, and sought to save me. So when we're saying Bible studying, we're saying it's just knowing more about him. Yeah, and I think another simple step you can take to 
um, that once again, like we're, you know, you think Bible study means raise the bar, but really we're lowering the bar. You know, I, th- I think another great way that somebody who isn't a scholar, isn't a pastor, didn't go to seminary, just trying to get started on studying yeah. the Bible and what that means, a great way to do that is to go to church mm-hmm. every week, every chance you get. Go to church yep. and bring your Bible to church. And not only bring your Bible, I'm not talking about your phone, but your paper Bible. Physical um, Bible. Yes, physical. Like you want to be able to fill it. Yes, the same Bible that you're going to read on Monday, yep. um, which if you read on your phone, I'm not going to hate on that. But if you want to study the Bible, you should not read on a digital copy. You yep. should have paper stuff with you um, or digital and paper or something like that because yep. um, your little phone can't do what what you can. I can find a passage so much faster in this yes. than I can when scrolling or and clicking. And one thing I found is the disclaimer. The reason I'm not a big fan of virtual things is if it's a virtual Bible, if I'm on my phone and I'm reading the Bible, you know what Satan's going to do? Yep. I'm going to get that text yep. message. Yep. I'm going to get that phone call. I'm going to get that email You're popped be, up. Oh, you know, I did forget to check who won in the final four last night. Let me, let let me check, check that. You know, and, yep. and then you end, up, you end up doing it. And so um, that, that's a great point. But so bring your Bible to church and then follow along. You know, we're, we're in Acts right now at Revo, but wherever we are, um, you know, you, you get in Acts chapter two and you just go with the pastor. Yep. And if you're at a church where you can't do that, where the application doesn't come from here, where the the sermon doesn't really come from here either. It's like, okay, well maybe that's a good sign that you need to find another church. But Here's your you know, hopefully every week you're at you're at a church where you're able to bring this Bible and you're able to look at it and learn from how Jamie has read the Bible, how Jamie has studied it, and now how Jamie is teaching you and applying it to your life. Or, you know, if you go to the South Fork campus, it'd be how Pastor Nathan is doing that. Or if you go to the Walkertown campus, it'd be, all right, let me, let me listen to Stephen. How is Stephen getting what he's getting from yeah. this? Learning from other people is a, is a huge key. Uh, this, might, this might be stealing from the next question, but I'm going to say it anyway. So um, there's a great resource online that has, it's free. Uh, and has taught me so much just by watching videos of yeah. someone else reading the Bible. Yeah. It's called Look at the Book. It's through um, Desiring God's website, which is a ministry um, in, in the United States. And it's a pastor breaking down questions and texts from the Bible where he's just, he's got a pen and you see all, you, you don't even see him. You just see the, white words on a black screen yeah. and he'll draw, write, underline. And you don't even have to agree with anything that he says. But what you know is here's a, a faithful pastor who loves God, who loves the Bible. And he is teaching me how to read the Bible while he's answering some other question about yeah. some other thing. Um, and so it's, it, that's been a huge help. Like what questions does he ask? How did he get from, to use your example, John 3 to Numbers 21, yep. or sometimes the illusion in there is way less obvious than what it is in John 3, mm-hmm. and he'll pull up a verse from the Old Testament or from some other place in the New Testament. I'm like, how did this happen? Yeah, but but I found that as I've seen those and watched those videos over time, I've started to be able to do the same mm-hmm. thing. Yep. Um, and just because as I'm reading it, as I'm studying it, I find myself asking the same questions, right? It's like yep. what you spend your time doing, who you spend your time hanging around, those things end up becoming a part of the way you think in all areas of life. So it's the same spiritually. So that, that's a great resource. But like I said, I, yeah, might, I think, be, might be stealing from what's coming I, up. But I think another great resource um, that people can use, and this one is one that, hey, you can buy it, but if you're desperately wanting one and you don't have the money for it, I'll buy it for you. It's a, I think, study Bibles. You are, stole one of mine. I was going to say that too. I yeah, think a good Bibles, study Bible. A good yeah, study Bible God. is a game changer when yep. you're talking about wanting to study the word. Because a study Bible, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to really dive a little bit deeper. Because study Bibles, if you're unsure what a study Bible is, you're going to read the passage. You're going to read John 3. And then under the passage is going to be a little footnote. And in that footnote is going to talk about, maybe it's going to say, the Greek word for this is this, right. and this is why it's important. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you're going to read it, and it's going to say this snake is referenced in Numbers 21. Right. And so then you can flip back to it. It Study Bibles are a game changer when it comes to just, I want to study the word. I didn't go to seminary. I didn't 
I don't have tons of formal training, yeah. but I want to know what God is doing. Mm-hmm. Study Bibles are a game changer. Yeah, especially if they've got, well, all study Bibles do, but you can even buy Bibles that aren't major, big, fat, heavy mm-hmm. study Bibles that have cross references that are huge because they'll do that same thing in John 3 where it'll have a little number, not the verse number, but a, a separate little number by a word or by a phrase. Yep. And then it doesn't, it doesn't have a big explanation of it. It just says something like, right beside that little number, Numbers 21, verse yep. 13 through 18 or something like and that. You um, right and then you know, it. like, you know, you may not know exact connections, although it should be obvious with that example, but it'll tell you like the same sort of idea. It may say, this is also a good example would be first Corinthians three, where you're reading yep. from with the milk and the meat, milk and meat is also used by Peter and second Peter to talk about the God's word, even though they're different authors, different mm-hmm. letters, it'll connect those things that if you didn't have that already up here, the study Bible with the cross references will it'll, do that for you. Help so you get there. that's a big, that's a big one too. So one thing when we are talking about studying the Bible, we talked about last week, we talked about Bible reading and we talked about how, Hey, start small. Like we said, five minutes, get in your word, get in the word and just see what God's teaching you. Um, what are some tips you would say for someone that's wanting to start Bible studying? Is there any kind of like mm. little tips or tricks, things that you do, you apply that helps you? Yes. Um, a plan. I know we said that last time, but having a plan because it helps you read it in context, mm-hmm. um, which helps you understand what's going on. Um, and that, that all kind of comes from the tip that I think is, is a huge, important key that you could, you not could, but should, is every time you're reading the Bible, you should be trying to find what is the author of this letter, this book, this story trying to say. Um, it's the golden rule yep. applied to reading. You, you treat others the way you want to be treated. Same thing in the way that you read. Um, you want to treat that author the way that you would want to be treated if you were writing something. And you wouldn't want someone to take what you've written, say a love letter to, to your wife, and then apply that to some other woman in your life. It's like, no, 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 I didn't mean that for another whoa, 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 woman. Whoa. I meant that for my wife. You know, like, don't do that. That's not, that's not fair. So in the same way, you know, when we read the Bible, we want to know what did Peter mean mm-hmm. in First Peter? What did Paul mean in 1 Corinthians? What is John trying to get across in John 3 when he's talking about this interaction between Jesus and Nicodemus? Um, And and one of those ways to do that is by looking at it in context, um, having a plan so that you're reading straight through or reading one chapter and studying that one chapter, something like that, where you've got all these ways to draw on other passages that are around it. Um, Gosh, I could go on forever, but I think that would probably be a big one. Um, trying to see what is the biblical author trying to say. Yep. I think one big tip that really helped me when I first started studying the Bible, because I, I have a story that's not like a lot of people. I didn't really get saved and start seeking Jesus until between junior and senior year of high school. And so for a Late long bloomer. time, I was very far. Yeah. And so for me, when I first started studying the Bible, I would just have a notebook in my Bible and I would just write down questions. Mm-hmm. Anything that I got to, if I got to a point where I was like, I don't understand this, I would write it down. That's great. Asking a question. And then I would go to someone and I'd be like, hey, Matthew. I didn't know you at the time, but let's say I did. I wouldn't have been able to answer at that time. What's this this question mean? (laughs) I'd have been like, great question. Let's call somebody else. Let's find somebody else. And I would write down all these different questions. I would go to my youth pastor at the time. His name was Brad, my brother-in-law. I'd be like, Brad, what is this saying? Mm -hmm. Brad, I read this. What does that mean? Brad, I know I've asked you a hundred questions and you're probably sick of it, but I read this. Yep. I don't understand it. Teach it to me. And I think when you really want to start studying, allow your questions to really grow mm-hmm. because your questions, I believe that there is no bad question, especially when you're seeking out God in the study. And so if you're having questions, if you're reading the Bible and something pops up, have that question and then seek someone out who can answer that question. Yeah whether it be a pastor or just someone who is deeper along in their faith, maybe, hey, our group leader. Yep, that's right. Maybe it's in our group where you have this question, you go to them and you say, what does this look like? Mm-hmm. How can you answer this? Um, one thing as we're about to, as we're going to close out this episode that I think would be a great little thing is we talked about some tips for doing it, but what is a pitfall of Bible studying? that you can think of as, as we're going to close, like people are saying, I want to study the word. I want to 
follow God. I want to know more. Um, what is a pitfall that you think maybe someone that maybe you've fallen into or maybe you're afraid someone might uh, stumble into? Yeah, I, I guess I can share from personal experience um, as well as something that I think it's it's pretty common too. But it's very easy to get caught up in sideways conversations mm. in the Bible. What I mean by that is by things that aren't specifically what is going on and what's important for your yeah. life, where you end up spending the time that's supposed to be spent with God, for God, to know God and love God more, researching a theological debate about yeah. eschatology or the end times um, or Calvinism versus Arminianism or, you know, you name your theological debate. And those are great and good questions to ask, mm -hmm. but not when you're trying to know and love God more. Yep. Um, those, those should be outside of Bible study time, outside yep. of Bible reading time. Um, those are go have those conversations. curiosity questions. Right, right. Those are not like, all right, now, and you still want to seek God in those moments too. It's not like you, you know, separate those two camps. Uh, but when you're, the goal is, this is my devotional time that I'm giving God my best to to know Him and to love Him. I'm not going to get get sidetracked with those other conversations yep. and debates. Instead, I'm here not to know more, but to see God. And I see God through through reading and through through hearing from Him. And so that's that's what I want to do. I think that's um, good. And and I, I guess, you know, just short, sweet, and to the point is don't get sidetracked. Like, remember yep. the goal. Um, I think the uh, one pitfall that I've fallen into that maybe I'm sure other people will, especially as you start to study and you start to learn more, is you'll start to make it all about how much more knowledge do you yep. have. Um, and don't make it a knowledge thing. I had a professor in school that the one thing he hounded on us more than anything else was don't let the Bible become a textbook mm -hmm. because it's all about seeking God. Right. And so if you're gaining knowledge, if you're using a study Bible or commentaries or you're asking questions to seek more information, don't let it turn into a textbook. Don't let it turn into, I know more, so I'm going to tell people all about my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Let it instead be a, I know more because I want to know who God is more. He's the one that's important. Right. And so what we'll do is in the description of the video, we will have linked uh some different resources. That, Good. I, that I we didn't think, ask you before we did that yep. if I could say that. And so I'm glad that you yep. said it. We will have some. <laughs> I want to have some in there. Yeah. We'll have some stuff that we think is useful, some websites, maybe some other YouTube videos or channels. We'll have some if you're curious about books. Because yep. I believe that if you want to study the word, it's a commitment. It is. If you want to study God's word, it's gonna it's gonna cost you something. It, it's gonna cost you some time. You can read the Bible in five minutes. You can't study the Bible in five yeah. minutes. It's going to cost some time. It might cost some money because some resources you're going to have to pay for. Right. It. It's going to cost time. It's going to cost resources. It's going to cost energy. It's going to cost you planning out, I'm going to study this. But what I know is if you are actively studying the Word and you want to know about God and know who He is, that's the way you do it. Yeah. You do it through studying His Word. You do it through devoting that time to Him. And so I'm so glad that we were able to talk about Bible studying. Uh, this is, like I said, episode three, Bible studying. I'm so glad you were here with us. Uh, make sure you, all the social media stuff, all the YouTube Like, subscribe, uh, stuff, like, follow, subscribe. whatever all those things uh, are. And Comment. join us next week as we continue on with our spiritual disciplines. Thank you so much. Bye.